Swindon was founded on steam. Indeed, it was built to provide the rolling stock for Brunel's great railway. A railway town for around 150 years, providing the finest engines in the world. Now it's all gone. Well, almost, leaving just the deserted cathedrals of heavy industry and the memories of thousands of local people who earn their living directly or indirectly from the railway industry. Those memories and those times are being recorded by a group of local people. The project is called On The Line and it was set up three years ago by Thamesdown Media Arts and paid for by the local council. They want as many people as possible to take part to help with the camera work, the lighting, in fact, all aspects of making a complete record of those times past. The statue, by the way, has become a symbol. The last project completed by the foundry craftsmen. It's all very exciting, but you'd have thought all this had been done before. It has, from a purely institutional point of view, and with a team of expert historians who come in with all the knowledge that they need, but very little feeling for the place. We've tackled it from a slightly different angle in that we've, we've talked to um, hundreds, literally hundreds of people who remember coming in here on their first day as an apprentice, who remember their first wage packet. And to them, that's an important aspect of historical Swindon. In its heyday, 12,000 people were employed in the Swindon workshops. The boast was that the very best locomotives from other workshops wouldn't have met the very lowest standards here. This film was shot in 1935, when more than 1,000 locomotives were being repaired every year, and the workforce could manufacture two of the giant engines every week. There were tinsmiths, springsmiths, chainmakers, fitters, turners, coppersmiths, millwrights, chair founders, to name but a few of the crafts carried out by the men who spent their whole working lives just here. Much of old Swindon's industrial heritage has been preserved, but in today's high-tech Swindon, times are changing so fast that soon the day-to-day -day life lived by generations of local people will have disappeared. That's why the record that's being prepared by the volunteers is so important. 781 end board. Was it difficult? I mean, cameras are fairly complicated things, aren't they? It's difficult, but if, you, if you're committed to it, to doing it, you know, if you want to learn it, you know, you can do. Do you have to have a love of uh, railways to be involved in this, or could anybody do it? Anyone could do it. I mean, it just happens that I'm a railway enthusiast, um, and therefore I'm combining me to hobbies if you like but anyone can do it and we've got many people sort of involved in the project you recommend it to anybody I would certainly the film won't just be a record of an industrial workshop it'll chronicle the lives of generations of West Country families in particular the tiny details of the way they lived not just these men but their wives and their children as well it's as much about their society as their work the project needs volunteers of all sorts, not just to operate the camera, but to hunt down relics, help with the editing, even give a hand transcribing the hours of tape that have already been made. The finished product will be available to schools and other organisations. The project organisers say they're also prepared to give advice to other people in other parts of the West Country who may fancy undertaking a similar scheme themselves. But mostly, it's about life in those times and the details which all too soon will be forgotten. The lives of men like Jack Harbour, now retired after spending every day of his entire working life in the workshops. I worked in the AE shop, which was the big erecting shop in those days. And, of course, these were all built and repaired there. And, um, well, you say about losing, um, not working on the videos. I enjoy helping on the videos, probably from a historical point of view and a point of view of the shop floor, probably. And the people who lived in Swindon worked in Swindon, and we mustn't forget the wives in Swindon. They had their the washing of overalls. Uh, people today who work in industry, they get their overalls either supplied, but um, my mother used to wash three pairs of overalls. And if you th imagine working underneath this locomotive after it's done five years on the track, 
You can imagine what the state of air overalls were like. Jack, I bet you could supply us with a thunder story. You must be very useful to the project as a, a sort of historian, then. Well, yes, I, th I think that's my role. What I'd like to do is to give a true record, as far as possible, of Swindon in its heyday to the children who are coming on in the West Swindon development and people who will look round and all they'll see is tower blocks and not a bit of manufacturing industry. This is something that everybody can be proud of. The, the boiler makers, the fitters, the turners, the erectors, the coppersmiths, this, this is trades that are dead and have been killed off.